Pat Brown's father, Edmund Joseph Brown, was known for running scams and gambling operations in San Francisco. With the help of businessman William Newsom II, Pat Brown became governor of California for two terms. During his governorship, he awarded the Squaw Valley concession contract to William Newsom III and his partner, John Pelosi. The deal was criticized for the state of California paying for everything and getting nothing. William Newsom III grew up with the governor's son, Jerry, who was training to be a Jesuit priest. John Pelosi's son, Paul, married Nancy D'Alessandro, daughter of Thomas D'Alessandro Jr., who was known for smuggling heroin into the U.S. with Lucky Luciano and the Baltimore Mafia. John Pelosi's son, Ron, married William Newsom's daughter, Barbara. Over ongoing disputes about the Squaw Valley concession, William Newsom Sr. threatened to hurt the governor politically, just as Governor Brown was running for a third term against Ronald Reagan. He lost. But eight years later, the former governor's Jesuit son, Jerry, reclaimed the governorship in 1974. He appointed William Newsom III to a Placer County judgeship in 1975, and three years later, to the State Court of Appeal. William Newsom was an attorney for oil magnate J. Paul Getty, named in the 1966 Guinness Book of World Records as the world's richest private citizen. And while serving on the appellate bench in the 1980s, he helped Getty's son, Gordon, secure a change in state trust law that allowed him to claim his share of a multi-air trust. After Newsom retired from the bench, he became administrator of the Getty Trust and provided seed money for his son, Gavin Newsom, Nancy Pelosi's nephew, to start the Plump Jack business that led to a career in San Francisco politics as mayor of San Francisco and lieutenant governor of the state of California. Gavin Newsom was informally adopted by the Gettys after his parents divorced and recently succeeded family friend Jerry Brown to be the current governor of California. For 80 years, these four families have ruled over the state of California politically. And with the help of Kamala Harris, Maxine Waters, Adam Schiff, and Dianne Feinstein, California's uncontrollable state government spending has amounted to over $2 trillion in debt and the highest tax rates in the country. The homelessness population is on the rise so much that a typhus outbreak has reached epidemic levels. Thousands of needles from illicit drugs litter the streets. They have made California a sanctuary state. They have been steadily chiseling away at the Second Amendment. They have passed laws for mandatory vaccinations. And they continue to aggressively oppose our president on every front. On October 1st, 2016, right before Donald Trump won the election, President Obama transferred full control of the internet from the US government to an independent California nonprofit organization. In a cyber war scenario, the US government may not have control over the internet. Even if it secures military and government domains and IP addresses, the targets in cyber warfare are likely to be civilian, and the U.S. government requires private sector infrastructure to operate. Since the internet underpins our computer systems, electrical grids, communication systems, and other critical infrastructure, our entire civilian society could be at risk. Who controls California? Alex Michelson, Fox 11. Hi, Governor. Uh, since nobody has asked this yet, I will jump on the grenade on behalf of everybody. You uh, don't have to. You don't have to. I'm curious uh, if you are watching the RNC and if you had a response to your ex-wife who said in prime time the other night that California is a 
land of discarded heroin needles in parks, riots in streets, and blackouts in homes. Um, this may leave you wanting, but let me first acknowledge that I appreciate you saying landing yourself on the grenade. Uh, and let me just extend appreciation for your effort to get my response, and I respectfully uh, defer to the next question. Rachel Bluth. So an update on that recall election for failed California Governor Gavin Newsom looks more and more likely tonight. As organizers now, they have amassed over 2 million signatures by today's deadline, well above the 1.5 million that required that was required to trigger a recall race. Gavin Newsom already signaling he's in a panic, saying yesterday, yeah, he's worried, and even trying to claim that the recall is being fueled by far right-wing conspiracy theorists and, of course, racists. Take a look. The other proponents, the chief, the top 10 proponents, the people that are behind this are members of the three percenters, the right wing militia group, the Proud Boys supported the insurrection, uh, are folks that quite literally enthusiastically support QAnon uh, conspiracies. And so that's the origin here. Oh, so all the people that signed it are signing on with racists. Is that what you're saying, Governor? No, Governor. The recall is being fueled by fed-up Californians, overtaxed by you and your party, and, by the way, who are sick and tired of your far-left failures and your awful handling of the coronavirus situation. Recall efforts are ramping up in California, and now former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger has a new warning for Governor Gavin Newsom. After Newsom recently called the recall a Republican power grab, Arnold responds saying, quote, this is the crazy thing here. When they say it's a power grab of the Republicans, let me tell you, the California Republicans couldn't even get anyone elected. It's ludicrous. The Republican Party doesn't exist. These are the signatures of the ordinary folks that have signed on. Tommy Lair and Leo Terrell are here with the reaction. All right, Leo, uh, it sounds like uh, Schwarzenegger knows of what he speaks, having been brought into office as a result of a recall nearly two decades ago. What do you think? This is the first time, Judge, I agree with the Terminator. D Gavin Newsom has tried to characterize this as a right-wing, racist move to get him out of office. He's lying to himself. This is Democrats, Republicans, independents who are sick and tired of Gavin Newsom shutting down California. This was the first time, Judge, I wanted to leave California. When Californians look at Florida and Texas, they see the economy open. They see their kids going to school. And Gavin Newsom, the biggest hypocrite, goes to the French Laundry restaurant, lied on national TV, said his kids are in, in, in being homeschooled when they were, in fact, in private schools. This guy is incompetent to run the state of California, he should be recalled. I want to apologize to America because California has given you Gavin Newsom, Nancy Pelosi, and Kamala Harris. I apologize. <laughs> okay, Tommy, what say you? Hey, listen, I actually fled California a year to this date because, unlike Leo, I understood I have to get the heck out of here. But you know what? Arnold Schwarzenegger is exactly right. These are average Californians from both parties who were saying, hey, listen, this state is being run into the ground. This is going to hell in a handbasket. And they realized it because of coronavirus and COVID. And they realized that their governor was a tyrant. But make no mistake, he's been a tyrant for years. And they've had Democrat tyrants for years. The state of California was in bad shape yep. long before coronavirus with the homelessness, the drug epidemic, the taxes, the regulations, a gas tax. I mean, my goodness, the state was failing before, and then coronavirus came in, and then he really got to be the tyrant dictator he always wanted to be. And Californians took a step back and said, I'm paying for this? I'm paying these taxes to live here, to be locked in my home, to not be free. And they said, you know what, either we're going to get out or we're going to stay and fight. So congratulations to all you Californians on both sides of the aisle that decided to stay, decided to fight. You're going to recall him. Just please, for the love of God, put somebody in that's better, that believes in freedom. Amanda, give us one or two reasons why you want to recall Gavin Newsom. What, oh. what motivated you to get involved with this campaign? Well, uh, a lot of small businesses have shut down, some of them for good, unfortunately, and that's their livelihood. Very, very sad to see. A lot of people that, a lot of kids actually out of school, a lot yeah. of suicides um, have gone up quite a bit. 
but what did it for me was the SB 145 that he signed, uh, that children have no place having sex with adults, and, and, and it's just, I don't care if you're gay or straight, a child is a child. They should be able to have their childhood. Organizers of the effort to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom say they have enough signatures to trigger an election. That hasn't happened since the 2003 recall of Governor Gray Davis. Here's how a recall election works in California. The signatures go through several verification steps that will take some time. County election officials verify the signatures then there's a period where voters can withdraw their signatures. And finally, the Department of Finance and Joint Legislative Budget Committee have a chance to review and comment on the results of the petition drive. Once all of those steps are completed, the Secretary of State will confirm to the governor and lieutenant governor that the recall effort has gained enough signatures to put it to a statewide vote. In this case, that number is 1.5 million. The certification will likely happen in September. The lieutenant governor is then required to call an election in the next 60 to 80 days, likely in late November. Anyone can run for governor in California, as long as they are a U.S. citizen, registered voter, and pay the $4,000 filing fee. Also, the state constitution says that you must be a California resident for five years. In 2003, there was a total of 135 candidates on the recall ballot. Thanks to a legislation signed earlier this year, all California voters will receive a ballot in the mail, which is similar to the 2020 election. The recall ballot will have a total of two questions on it. Shall Governor Newsom be recalled from the office of governor? And if so, who should succeed him? A simple majority, which is 50% plus one, must vote to recall Newsom in order for him to be removed. In that event, the candidate with the most votes will be selected to finish out Newsom's term, which runs until 2022. All right, beautiful California patriots. Um, so, so nice to have you guys here tonight for another. You may open Hold now. on. Gavin Newsom has saved California. Hey, you can open. We did it. Time to open up. He took a hard stand against COVID-19. We did it. We defeated him. I mean, we ended the lockdown. And now he's taking a stand for business. Anybody in here? Hello. Open up. Hey, Every step of the up. way. Gavin Newsom made the right decision. Hey, homeless guys, go back to work now. We did it. <laughs> we are all in his debt. High five, California. Gavin Newsom, he did a good job. Paid for by Gavin Newsom's campaign to not recall Gavin Newsom, but instead consider him a viable option for president in 2024. <laughs> that was epic. At, at any rate, we'll try that.